We're here at the Poles Allowed Festival in Bristol at the Colston Hall. We have Miss Christina Malkowska Jaba, Mrs., and her son here, Pavel Malkowski Jaba. <laughs> Can you tell us why this is such an important event for the Bristol Polish community? Well, uh, Poles Allowed is a way of bringing the whole community together. And for us as scouts and guides, it's been great because we have a hundred young people here that we're developing through the movement. And there's such an important, you know, there's a need to bring the community together because there's 30,000 Poles in Bristol. 30,000 Poles in Bristol. Yeah, and a lot of them are young people. And they come and they are a bit lost and, you know, they really want that input into their traditional, you know, history and geography and way of life, not to lose touch with Poland and with their Polish heritage and that's really what we aim to do here in the, in the West, outside Poland. In a very kind of small context, uh, you know, just within ourselves, and do it um, as something more of a performance. It wasn't us just off in the woods in the middle of the night with a fire. I have to say, it's really exciting to be here with you, Scouts, today in Hat Session, Hat Circle, Bristol, because um, I, I wrote a song about um, a Polish scout who escaped from Auschwitz in 1942 in the commander's car and his name is Kazimierz Bichowski and both Christina and I, when we go back a little bit, we go back yeah. to 2011 when Kazi came to England and now you're doing a remarkable thing, um, Christina, you are now doing an extensive study of the situation of the Polish Scouts in Auschwitz during the Second right. World War and I understand there were 150,000 Polish intelligence who were murdered there. Would you like to tell us a little bit about your study? Are you, are you able to talk about it? Well, yeah, a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's Let us into a secret. <laughs> yeah, the Boys Scouts of Auschwitz will be published um, in 2014. And what happened in Auschwitz in the first two years, 1940 to 42, was that the Germans had the camp specifically as a way of destroying the Polish intelligentsia and all Polish patriots. That was what it was for. They did it by working them to death. So it was exceptionally cruel. And I've just been there and been in Auschwitz and looked at all the archives. And it's quite difficult to find the history of what the scouts specifically did because there was such a huge, actually hidden army, a hidden Polish army, in those prisoners. And there were structures and there were ranks and the whole thing. But the scouts were also very involved in that and they had their own group which did meet and did help each other and they would share crumbs of bread and they would watch out for the youngsters, the young people, the ones under 21 who were particularly um, prone to psychological trauma, you know, it was a very traumatic, but psychological breakdown and you know the older men were very keen to rescue the youngsters and they did, some of those early scouts did actually survive and in fact last week at Holocaust Memorial Day I interviewed some of them because they're still alive like Kazimierz, who is now 93. And this is a wonderful thing that's happening because I'm able to play at these wonderful concerts in Polish yeah. communities around that's the great. country. Thank you to the Arts Council of England uh, on this passport tour and meet wonderful people who are truly making a great um, and a great impact for the Polish community here in Britain and helping to connect both British and Polish communities through music, mm -hmm. song and film. And I'm so pleased that we've been able to connect with you, Christina, through our film, Kajika Commander's Club. That's brilliant. And to yes. be able to have you here today is a great honour. And it's also keeping us involved. You are keeping the story of Kajiks alive by your research. Well, then we all have to do it. We all have to do it together. It's a very big job because we must not allow this history to die. We must mm -hmm. not. It's something so admirable and so honourable and something wonderful to talk about. And I know that you, Katie, have. You know, it's your great heart actually that just went on fire with this and inspired me to, and inspired Kaji because he was amazed. He didn't know anybody would be interested. You know, as I say, in Poland there's a sense of overkill and they you know, they've had enough. And it, maybe it takes somebody from England to look at that and go, hang on a minute, nobody knows this. Let's talk about this two years in Auschwitz 
that is, it has been forgotten. You know, let's talk about this heroic time of these boys who, who were boys and they were confronted with the worst thing and all they had was their scarf cross. And the, the relationship between Britain and Poland goes back all that time because the Poles fought under British command in the Second World War and jointly overcame Germany in so many ways. And the more research I do on what the Poles did in the Second World War, the more amazed I am. So it's a wonderful story. Thank you so much to the Polish Scouts here in Bristol. And we're so honoured to be able to be here to play for you all, to join in, for you to join in, in our concert and sing a wonderful song, Hey Sokowi, to the Polish community here. And the next generation. And the next generation. <laughs> thank you, Chris thank you, Christina. Thank you. Thank you, Pavel. And let's come back to Bristol soon. We're having a fantastic time at Poles Allowed Festival here in Bristol. Yeah. And long live Great Britain, long live Poland. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you.